In a previous video, I, I showed you how to find the function if you're given the parabola, but the vertex had to be at 0, 0. It was a special case. And now in this video, we're going to say, you know what? It doesn't matter where the vertex is. We can find the equation or the function of a parabola no matter where it is on the graph. And so the essential question in this video is, in the upper left-hand corner here, how do I find a quadratic function from a graph? No longer are we saying the vertex has to be at 0, 0. So here's your steps for doing that. Step 1, start with vertex function form. Step 2, replace h and k with the known vertex coordinates. Step 3, replace x and f of x with a known point from the graph. Step number four, solve for a. And then step number five, write the final function. So notice here, class, we're doing the same thing we did before, basically. We have to find the value of a. The difference is now we're going to be plugging in an h and a k value, whereas before those were zero when the vertex was at the origin, and so we didn't have to mess around with those. Now, one more thing I want you to note so we don't get confused. f of x f of x is equal to y. So when it says replace x and f of x, it's basically just saying replace x and y. I want you to rem be reminded of that. And a function, the f of x, in this case f of x, that's just the y value of the coordinates on the graph. All right, let's go ahead and do an example. First one, find the function of the graph, then explain the transformations compared to the parent function. So once you find the function, then explain how the, the uh, parabola was transformed from the parent function. All right, so here's our graph. We have a known point at negative 4, 1. And we also know the vertex, because there's a point right there, so we know the vertex. We're going to have to write that down. So the vertex here is at negative 2, negative 1. Negative 2, negative 1. Okay. Let's make, let's make a couple notes for ourselves to make this really easy. The first thing is our known point is going to be labeled x and y, just like we did in the previous example when the vertex was at 0, 0. The only add, added thing now is that we're also going to label h and k. Remember, the vertex is found at the h value and the k value. Always do this class. Identify the vertex, label those values of x as h and of y as k, and then find your known point and label that as x and y. This will make the job, your job, a little bit easier to understand. Okay. Step number one, start with vertex function form. f of x is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. There's our vertex function form. Okay, step number two, replace h and k with the known vertex coordinates. All right, so we're going to rewrite this equation but we're going to replace h and k. f of x equals a times x. Now, think about it. h is negative 2. That means we're going to replace this as a negative negative 2, so it's positive 2. Remember, you flip the sign of h, and the k value is negative 1. You keep the sign of k. Step number three, replace x and f of x with a known point from the graph. Here's our known point, negative 4, 1. So let's go ahead and do that. So our y value here for our known point is 1. The y value goes here, equals a. Oops. Our x value here is negative 4 on our known point. So plug it in, negative 4 plus 2 squared minus 1. And now the next step, step 4, says solve for a. Now we've got to do a little bit of math. So let's do PEMDAS parentheses first. We can solve the value in parentheses. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. 
that's going to be squared minus 1. Next step, let's solve the exponent in PEMDAS. Exponent is next. Oop, let's not put a, because remember we're going to do negative 2 squared is positive 4. We'll put that in front of a, and then minus 1. Now our goal here, class, is to get a all by itself. That means we've got to move this negative 1 to the other side. The way we do that is we add 1 to both sides. Add 1 to both sides, and you end up with 1 plus 1 is 2 is equal to 4 times a. This negative 1 plus 1, that means it moved. It's gone now. Now we can go ahead and divide both sides by 4, and you're going to end up with 2 over 4 is equal to a. That means that a, so a is equal to 2 over 4, which is equal to 1 half. And now that we've found a, we're done. We can now write our equation, and we're finished. Now, when you write your equation, you put f of x back where it was, because that's our unknown y value. You plug in our a value, which is 1 half. x remains a variable, but we don't want to leave h and k. We know what those are. So h was negative 2. That means we still put plus 2 squared, and we still put minus 1. In fact, take a look. This equation is exactly the same as this equation. The only difference now is that we replace the a with 1 half. And there is our equation. Um, I will try to put a box around that. There we go. There is our final answer. Now, one more thing it says. Explain the transformations compared to the parent function. And the way you explain that is, first take a look at a. a is 1 half. It's still positive, so it still faces up. And we're going to put on here the graph... is compressed because we have an a value that's less than 1. That means the graph gets compressed. The graph is compressed and shifted. And let's see how it shifted. It shifted two, two units left and one unit down. So how do we explain the transformation? The graph is compressed because A is less than 1. It's not flipped because it's still facing up because A is positive. And it shifted two units to the left. You see from the origin, two units to the left and one unit down. That's explained because H is negative 2 and K is negative 1. All right, let's do another one. Again, I encourage you at this point, try this one on your own. See if you can get the answer, and then compare it to my answer. Let's start with our vertex form. Oh, before I do that, I should be labeling. The vertex is at 1, 3. And remember, that's going to be, this is H. And this is k. Our known point is at 1, 2, 3, negative 1. So I'm going to try to write that right here. 3, comma, negative 1. That's going to be our x value and our y value. How easy is that? Once you label those, you just plug them in. I'm going to actually combine steps 2 and 3 in one step. We can plug in h, k, x, and y all in one shot. So our y value, which is f of x, that's right here, negative 1. A, we don't know. Our x value is 3. Our h value is positive 1. We're going to flip the sign. That's going to end up being negative 1. Our k value is positive 3. We keep the sign. All right, let's solve. PEMDAS, parentheses first. 3 minus 1 is 2. Next step, let's solve the exponent. Negative 1 equals 2 squared is 4. That's going to be 4a plus 3. Next step is we've got to get this 3 to the other side because i got to get the a term by itself. i got to subtract 3 from this side. When I subtract 3 from this side, that becomes negative 4. 
And now I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And this is going to be negative 4 over 4 equals a. So a equals negative 4 over 4. And if you do negative 4 divided by 4, you get negative 1. Our a value is negative 1. So our function is going to be f of x is equal to negative 1. There's our a value. We leave x as a variable. Go back to here. You see our h value was positive 1, so it comes out in the equation as negative 1. And k is positive 3. Now you see, class, do this a couple times and you'll see. It's not as bad as it seems. There is our final equation. Let's go ahead and describe the transformations. Well, looks like a is negative 1. That means we're not stretched or compressed because it's negative 1. But it is negative and that means it's reflected. So our explanation is the graph you can say the graph is pointing down or the graph is reflected. That's compared to the parent graph and shifted. Let's take a look. It shifted one unit right and how many units up? Over one, up three, and three units up. So we just described the change in shape. It's just flipped or upside down or reflected. It's not compressed or stretched because the a value is negative 1. And the, and the vertex has been shifted one unit right and three units up. Okay, last question on this page. A new essential question to cover with you, because you're going to see this kind of a problem, and that is, how do I change vertex to standard form? There are some situations where we, we may have something in vertex form. We want to convert it to standard form. The good news is, class, you've already covered how to do this in your polynomials section. All we're going to do is distribute until we get it in standard form. So I'm going to, for my next step here, f of x equals negative 2 times x plus 1 squared plus 3. I'm going to drop the f of x for now until I get my final expression. Then I'll rewrite the equation. So I'm going to write on here, we got negative 2. Now think about this, x plus 1 squared is just x plus 1 times x plus 1. And then we've got to put the plus 3 here. There's our first step. Take the binomial, which is squared, and just write it to twice. Now we're going to do this in two steps. We're going to distribute the negative 2 to the first binomial first. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times positive 1 is negative 2. Put that in parentheses. That's a binomial. And now just write down the part you haven't dealt with yet. x plus 1. And don't forget the plus 3 at the end over here. It's easy to forget that. The next step you remember, you're going to actually distribute the two terms of the first binomial to the entire second binomial. So negative 2x is going to be multiplied times x plus 1. And then the negative 2 in the first binomial is multiplied times the x plus 1. Then we add the 3 on the end. All right, now we can go ahead and just distribute this monomial to the two terms of the binomial. Negative 2x times x is negative 2x squared. Negative 2x times positive 1 is negative 2x. Negative 2x times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times positive 1 is negative 2. And then we have the positive 3 on the end. Now you're going to see we have like terms. These two terms are like terms, and these two terms are like terms. Let's write our final expression. Negative 2x squared minus 2x minus 2x is minus 4x. If you have struggled with that in math principles, just do this. Negative 2 minus 2 equals negative 4. So we know it's negative 4. All right, and then we have negative 2 plus 3. That is positive 1. Again, if you struggle with that mathematically, just go ahead and put in your calculator. Negative 2 plus 3 equals positive 1. 
and now we have standard form. We've simplified it. We now have standard form. Let's rewrite our final equation and put a box around it. f of x is equal to negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. And let's put a box around our final answer. And there it is. That is how, those are the steps. You've done them before. This is how to get from vertex form to standard form.